Episode 31, The Missed Opportunity. Time flew by as Helen and Jacob talked about the powerful members of the Dragon Clan. By the time Dracon and Helen dropped Jacob off at the gate of his dorm, Helen was convinced that they had made the right decision by picking Jacob as their son-in-law. She felt that he was considerate, smart, and caring. He would protect her daughter with all his might. She had already begun treating him like her son. Jacob didn't want to wake Sophie up, so he said a quick goodbye to her parents and thanked them for the weekend before getting out of the car. He stood at the car window for just a few seconds to look at Sophie, who was sleeping like a baby. She looked so innocent and beautiful while sleeping. The moonlight touched her face lightly, and Jacob couldn't take his eyes off her. He reluctantly began walking towards his dorm. Jacob walked into his dorm room and saw that no one was in there. He guessed that they had probably gone to the library or to the cafe to hang out. While his roommates were out, Jacob tried to pass his time by finishing his assignments that had been accumulating for a week. He didn't even bother to do the complicated ones, as he had planned to borrow someone else's notes and copy their assignment. It was almost dinner time, and his roommates hadn't returned. Sam and the others had assumed that Jacob went home already and would only come back around 7 or 8 on Sunday night. They would have never guessed that he had gone to spend some time with his fiancée and her family this weekend. Jacob began reminiscing about the weekend that he had spent at the Wildcat Mountain. It was probably the most substantial and meaningful weekend he had had in a while. He had more fun than he could have ever anticipated. He thought of something and quickly took his cell phone out of his pocket. He scrolled through his gallery and found the picture of Sophie sitting on the rock, her face all red from the long climb up the mountain. He scrolled to the picture of him and Sophie and a big smile spread across his face. He looked at Sophie, smiling in the picture. Her shiny eyes were like black pearls. Her nose was delicate. Her eyelashes were naturally curly, and her lips? Her lips were soft and kissable. With the background of green forest and gray stone stairs and rocks, she looked almost unreal. He couldn't believe how beautiful she was and set the picture as his wallpaper. After a few seconds, he changed the wallpaper, remembering that his friends did not know about her and would ask questions if they saw their picture on his phone. He looked at the picture again. Sophie is already a pretty girl with beautiful, innocent eyes. She will look even prettier as she grows older. He started thinking about her, but his thoughts quickly took a detour. She must be really popular at her school, and boys must be hitting on her all the time. Jacob felt the flush on his face and then tried to shake the thoughts away. What am I even thinking about? Am I jealous? Just as Jacob was about to dwell on how many boys must have asked Sophie out by now, his roommates opened the door of the dorm and entered. They looked surprised on seeing Jacob in the room. How are you back so early? asked Sam, clearly under the impression that Jacob had gone home. The athletic games are tomorrow. Jacob, you've got to work hard and try not to come in last. One of the guys patted Jacob's shoulder and said encouragingly, Your expectations of me are so high, Jacob said sarcastically with a straight face. But deep down, he knew that there was a huge possibility that he would lose because of such little practice. It's great that we don't have any classes for the whole day tomorrow, Sam piped in cheerfully. The four of them began to talk excitedly about the games that were going to take place the next day, the students who would be attending, whether or not the girls they were crushing on would sit with them, what kind of snacks they would get, and so on. They didn't have much hope for the 1,500-meter race in which Jacob was participating, but they encouraged him nonetheless. If he wasn't their roommate and friend, they probably wouldn't even care about this stupid race. Jacob, too, was a last-minute resort as there weren't any other athletes in their major. For the class, Jacob winning any position other than the last one would itself be a cause for celebration. As they got more and more excited about the next day, Jacob got a bit bored and walked to the balcony for some fresh air. It had stopped raining and the moon was shining brightly in the clear night sky. He recited the spirit concentration scroll silently twice. 
he felt refreshed as all the negative energy around him began to disappear. He tried to recall the ancient tree from the Dragon Temple on top of the Wildcat Mountain and the stone monument attentively. As he concentrated, he felt the same comfortable feeling of the rich essence of the wood entering his body. He was also stupefied as to how all the negative energy was sucked up by the trunk of the tree. He had so much to learn in this process of cultivation. As he focused, a realization dawned on him all of a sudden, and he exclaimed, The water element! Susan had said that Jacob was of the water element when she grabbed his arm the other day. Is it possible that the spirit concentration scroll utilizes the water elements that originate from heaven and earth? The realization became deeper as he recalled the scripts on the stone monument. If desire shall conceal the true self, the true self will manifest itself even more. If desire shall weaken the true self, the true self will strengthen itself even more. If desire shall abandon the true self, the true self will prosper even more. If desire shall deprive the true self, the true self will give even more. This is known as the enlightened nature that is subtle yet profound. Gentleness overcomes strength, and the meek overcomes the strong. Jacob felt his heart pounding, and the barrier that stopped him from advancing to the second level of the spirit concentration scroll was about to be broken. Dracon asked me to go to that temple not only to accompany Sophie, but also to test how much I could comprehend and understand, he realized. Jacob frowned and tried his best to look for the sensation of water. However, the more stubborn he was during his concentration, the harder it became for him to comprehend it. He took a deep breath and slowly recited the spirit concentration scroll to calm his mind. Water is stillness and wood is strength. Affinity and aversion can complement each other. Combining toughness with tenderness so they can have mutual control and support. Jacob thought about the ancient tree and suddenly had some profound inspirations. The seed that the ancient tree left inside Jacob's body contained pure wood essence that abruptly sprouted inside him. In the meantime, the water element in the air formed into a few tiny water streams and poured into his body. Jacob found himself so relaxed he felt like he was floating. His body felt transparent, a see-through vessel that easily soaked in all of nature's energy from heaven and the earth. He knew that he was about to break through the first level of the spirit concentration scroll and achieve the second level. It was the inspiration that the ancient tree brought him. In terms of that stone monument, it talked about the ways of managing and controlling water and it matched the essence of the third level of spirit concentration scroll. The mist that was originally spreading in the air gradually formed into nine vague whirling streams of water and entered into the nine crucial acupoints in his body. After entering Jacob's body, the thick streams tried to find their own positions and began to settle down. What are you doing outside? Sam yelled from inside the room. Jacob's concentration was broken with a jolt, and the nine streams of water that were filling Jacob's body instantly vanished. Sam walked up to the balcony and patted Jacob's shoulder. What are you doing out here? You have a race to attend tomorrow. Go to bed early. He dragged Jacob back inside. The ancient tree that brought Jacob his seed of inspiration completely vanished and Jacob couldn't find any trace of the wood essence nor control the abundant water energy inside his body. The water dissipated and flowed out of this body till there was not a single drop left. The peaceful energy of nature around Jacob's body also dissipated, and it was chaos once more instead of the division of the five elements. Jacob understood that this failure wasted a great opportunity to advance to the second level of the spirit concentration scroll. Also, he didn't know when he would get a chance to make the next breakthrough. Even though he was disappointed, 
he didn't want to blame it on Sam. After all, Sam saw him standing outside for a long time and asked him to take a break for his own good. I better find a quiet place without disruption for cultivation, Jacob sighed as he climbed into his bed and called it a day. Episode 32 Kathy is Beautiful The air was a bit different when Jacob woke up. The university was lively with a festive spirit in the air, even though there were no decorations or banners hung up for the big event. Everyone was excited. Sam and Jacob's other two roommates were up and about since as early as 5 in the morning. They packed all the essentials for the games before heading out, like food, drinks, camera, binoculars, and so on. They met up with their friends from other dorms and headed to the field together. Jacob, on the other hand, didn't share their enthusiasm. He put on his sportswear and his running shoes before he had a big breakfast in the cafeteria. Then he walked nonchalantly to the sports field. He was pretty calm for the race and took no stress because of it. He did not want to lose, but he did not want to create a big deal out of it either. The games were divided into two sections. Games such as badminton, basketball, and volleyball were held in the newly finished stadium, whereas athletic activities such as track races and gymnastics were held on the sports field. The students were enthusiastic for the outdoor sports more than the indoor games, owing to their popularity and the spacious field. Adding to everyone's excitement, all classes were suspended for the day so that everyone could attend the games. It made for a perfect picnic for the students who enjoyed sitting comfortably with their snacks and watching sports. Since there were no classes, it was mandatory for everyone to attend these games, not that they would have missed it anyway. However, for flirtatious guys like Sam, these events were appealing because they were the perfect place to check out girls. Kathy, the class president, was already taking attendance when Jacob arrived at the designated area of his class. She called out everyone's name, one by one, to make sure everyone was attending. Since the class president was taking attendance herself, they couldn't meddle with it like they could during packed classes. But no one wanted to bunk this event anyway. Not only did everyone show up, but there was also a lot of enthusiasm in the air. Kathy usually dressed modestly, but she was looking attractive today in her white sleeveless t-shirt with a v-neck and ripped denim shorts that highlighted her tanned legs. People assumed that she was in a good mood today because of the comfortable outfit and the beautiful weather. Her face had a warm smile as she saw Jacob approaching her. Anyone could tell that she was happy to see him with the way she excitedly greeted him. Jacob, you are here. The guys who were in earshot picked up on the unusual greeting and started teasing Kathy. What is the matter with you? You can go participate in the games too if you are capable. Kathy scolded the guys with her stern class president face. Her smooth hair was tied up in a bun, revealing her long neck and soft shoulders. Her face was devoid of any makeup, her natural radiance glowing in the sunlight. She was looking divine as the sunlight lightly caressed her face. Her light clothes and soft face did not work well for her authority, as the guys in her class were not getting scared of her today. Her insult only made them retort with louder remarks. Kathy ignored them and turned her attention back to Jacob. She stepped closer to him and fixed his collar while saying, Good luck today. Everyone was surprised at her move, and the guys purposely cleared their throats loudly in an attempt to annoy her even more. Even a few guys from the nearby class joined them. Although Kathy kept a very low profile, she was still one of the prettiest girls in their major. Jacob got a bit embarrassed and stepped back. Okay, I'll try my best, he replied to Kathy and sat down next to her. Class president, I want to run the 1500 meter race too. Count me in as well. Me too. The guys continued to tease her. They all were envious of Jacob. None of you were this enthusiastic when you were supposed to. What happened now? She rolled her eyes at them. 
I was on the list, class president. I want you to adjust my collar, too. Sam jumped up and cried out. Jacob remembered clearly that Kathy had randomly put in Sam's name on the list as a backup since no one else had enrolled. Now, he was taking advantage of it to tease them. He tried to give Sam a stern look to stop him, but Sam ignored him. Kathy ignored Sam's quip. She got a little embarrassed as everyone was looking at her by now, finding the whole scene very interesting. She blushed and stood up. All right, now let's go on with the attendance. Riley. Sam had made a bet with his three roommates, including Jacob, as soon as they laid eyes on Kathy in their freshman year. They wondered who amongst the 38 guys in their class would be able to land Kathy as his girlfriend. The fact was, in the past two years, not only in their class, but no guy in the entire university had a shot with her. Even the most popular girl at their university, Lisa, was nowhere near her in terms of looks and attitude. Kathy always kept a low profile and had a sweet attitude, whereas Lisa always had rumors going around about her. According to Sam, Lisa was only popular because she was in a sorority, had a slender body, and was constantly getting involved with the influential and popular guys in college. Lisa, who was sitting under a parasol like the over-the-top girl she was, heard the commotion and looked over. She was a bit surprised to see Kathy looking so pretty and different than usual in her outfit. She made a face when she noticed some guys in her own class staring in Kathy's direction too. Kathy did not intend to steal her thunder at all. She only wanted to dress up a little on such an important day to cheer the guys in her class. Though, indeed, Jacob was the only one that was participating in an actual game. Lisa glimpsed at Kathy and her eyes landed on Jacob. She noticed him in his sportswear for the first time. In fact, she had properly noticed him for the first time and found him appealing. Her expression suddenly darkened as she thought of something. She gave him a quick glance and immediately turned away. She didn't want people to think that she was interested in an ordinary guy like him. Her reputation was very important to her. The teasing and the overall noise was becoming unbearable for Jacob. He had already tried to get the guys to stop by giving them deathly looks and it hadn't worked. He turned to Kathy and said, I'll go warm up over there. What's the rush? The 1500 meter race won't start until this afternoon. Kathy didn't realize that Jacob was just trying to avoid Sam and the guys. All the long distance races are scheduled in the afternoon so there won't be enough space for warming up later on. He made up an excuse quickly and waved as he got down from the spectator stand and jogged down the stairs. Kathy lost her train of thought when she watched Jacob climb down the stairs. Her attention was on his sculpted body and toned muscles. His natural and unrestrained walk made her forget where she was and what she was doing. She was smitten and only came back to her senses when someone called out her name. She then went on with the attendants. How come he looks even more handsome than last week? Kathy felt a bit strange, as if there were a million butterflies in her stomach, all fluttering at once. She thought that she was probably building him up in her head. Is this what beauty is in the eyes of the beholder means? She wondered. When Jacob got to the track, Michael entered the sports field from the locker room in his snug sportswear. He did a short sprint and stopped to stretch his legs. He then waved in the direction where most of the girls were. The girls hooted, cheered, and shook their pom-poms in his direction. Girls from the different fields and departments were gathered to see him and got excited to see him waving at them while showing off his abs by going shirtless for his warm-up. Lisa was also one of those girls. Who cares what's going on between Miss Know-It-All Kathy and that plain old what's-his-name? Look at Michael all chiseled. I'm rooting for him today. She thought to herself and smiled. Episode 33 Jacob and His Lady Luck Jacob ran into Michael as he took the field for a warm-up. 
as they were standing next to each other, it was hard not to draw comparisons. Anyone could tell that Jacob's sportswear was from a local shop and wasn't branded. Although it looked just fine, there were some frayed edges. Its quality wasn't as great as Michael's branded jersey, which had a charm on its own. The fabric looked even better under the sun as its prints and labels got highlighted. Michael was wearing a pair of fancy long-distance running shoes, whereas Jacob, on the other hand, was wearing a common pair of sneakers. Michael snorted in derision after seeing how poor his outfit was. Jacob, however, refused to indulge in his futile ego battle and ran over to the track. Sophomore, Michael said as Jacob was passing by, I hope you're ready for your last place in the race. Jacob was about to ignore him again, but decided against it. He turned around and said, We'll see who comes in at the last spot. The name is Jacob, by the way. Michael sneered and leaned over to whisper in his ear, I'll beat you in front of the entire college. He was being arrogant and boastful. He waved once again to the girls cheering him on and showed off in front of Jacob. Kathy saw Michael talking to Jacob and wondered, Since when did these two become good friends? Jacob wasn't expecting to come first in this race anyway, but he wanted to try his best as Kathy had encouraged him and he didn't want to let her down. He did not want to waste his energy arguing with Michael or caring about his branded clothes or popularity. What, has the cat got your tongue, sophomore? Michael tried to provoke him and proceeded to show off by doing a split. It made the girls on the spectator stand scream and cheer loudly. Jacob ran quietly to the track with his fists tightly clenched. He really wanted to hit Michael when he provoked him, but he knew it would only cause trouble. Does he really think that the college runs on his charms? Jacob turned around to look at him, and he was once again stretching in front of the girls. Jacob rolled his eyes and began to focus on his warm-up. Girls kept going crazy every time Michael came close to their stand during his practice. His good looks, brawny build, charming smile, and his expensive sportswear made them giddy. Each one of them wanted Michael to notice them and would scream to catch his attention. On the other hand, Jacob was just another nobody to them who would never be as popular as Michael. He did not have the looks, the charisma, or the money to match up to him. Jacob turned around to look at Kathy and his classmates for inspiration. They were the only ones looking in his direction. They didn't care about his unimpressive clothes and old sneakers. They just wanted him to do his best. He smiled and decided to give this race his all. He found a quiet corner on the side of the track, away from Michael and his fangirls, and started warming up. He practiced short sprints on the running track. It was a sunny day, and it made him sweaty in just a few laps. He returned to the stands after feeling completely warmed up and reached up to where his classmates were sitting. Kathy had finished taking the attendance a while back and was more or less done with her class president duties for now. She smiled as she saw Jacob returning to the stands. Everyone had taken their seats. They were waiting for the games to start as they sipped on their drinks and shared snacks. Jacob! Kathy waved her slender arm when she saw him coming over. Jacob walked over and Kathy pointed at the empty seat near her. Come sit here! Jacob wasn't surprised at her gesture, but he had to resist the tempting offer. He searched for Sam and the other two of his roommates as he said to Kathy, I'd better go sit with them. They're sitting way at the back, and you have to go for your race later. It's inconvenient to go up and down like that. Kathy made up an excuse as she wanted him to stay. Jacob had no arguments there. She did make sense. He saw his friends waving at him and giving him sly smiles, and he knew he's in for a whole night of mockery ahead of him. He sat down beside Kathy. This move completely startled Sam. His mouth gaped open. It was almost wide enough to fit a tennis ball. Jacob, the guy who shies away from women, who can't even muster up the courage to confess his crush, and is even reluctant to borrow notes from a female classmate, is sitting with Kathy. Just then, Kathy took out a handful of tissues from her handbag and wiped off the sweat from Jacob's forehead. She then offered him her bottle of water. Sam felt like his jaw had dislocated. 
This is sensational. A front page news. A breaking story on broadcast. Sam shouted to get the attention of his group who were busy passing nachos to each other. Jacob's dating Kathy. What? One of them cried out in surprise. He stopped eating his hot dog and looked at Jacob and Kathy who were sitting together in the front row. His mouth fell open in surprise, just like Sam's a few seconds ago. It's fine, it's fine, I can do it myself. Jacob was flattered and a little flustered as Kathy wiped his sweat for him. He hastily stopped her by holding her soft arm. The sudden interest Kathy was showing in him was making him uncomfortable. It's okay, I don't mind. After all, you are the hero of our class, aren't you? She winked. She handed over a fresh bottle of water to him. Here, you need to keep hydrated. Keep this with you. I've got plenty to go around. Jacob's friends were seeing their every move, and strangely, Jacob could feel their eyes on them. Jacob is really having some luck with women, huh? Sam and others said to each other as they kept looking at Jacob and Kathy. Don't be so nice to me, class president. I'm not used to this special treatment. Jacob chuckled and took the bottle from her and tried to keep the conversation light. Though what he said was the truth. He was being honest due to nervousness. I'm thinking, from now on, I will be extra nice to you. Kathy laughed. Jacob was stupefied by her smile as he felt like his heart was about to pop out of his chest. I was joking, Kathy added after seeing Jacob looking at her that way. Oh, he thought for a few seconds and said, Hey, please don't be mad if I disappoint you today and end up coming last in the race. You know what the biggest difference between you and the others here? She asked rhetorically. I know for sure that you will try your best. She looked straight at him as she said that, and Jacob saw the confidence in her eyes. Jacob smiled softly. Oh, do you know Michael? She suddenly asked. Sort of, Jacob mumbled. He thought Kathy might be interested in someone as attractive and popular as Michael. She should probably be sitting with him, wiping his sweat, passing him the bottle of water, laughing at his jokes. Kathy broke his chain of thoughts and said, He is kind of cute and a lot of girls like him, but I think he's a show-off. Jacob felt a lot lighter after her answer. It was like she could read his mind. He eased up around Kathy as she continued talking about Michael. His dad is the deputy mayor of the city, did you know? She said. No wonder he's so arrogant. Is being the son of someone influential such a big deal? It's not like it's his achievement. Jacob replied. As he began talking to Kathy, he completely forgot about the number of envy-filled eyes that were staring at him and Kathy. She would tilt her head and laugh at Jacob's silly jokes from time to time, touching his arm and making it evident that she liked him a lot. Jacob was enjoying her company too. At least he was till he began to turn pale all of a sudden. A blurry vision of a high school girl in a blue uniform was approaching him. As his vision became clearer, he knew who she was at once and he froze. Only one name came out from his color-drained lips. Sophie! Episode 34 Kathy Meets Sophie Sophie? Jacob's heart skipped a beat. He looked closely and tried to recognize the girl who had entered the sports field. As the entrance was far away, he couldn't see who the girl was, but going by the color and style of her uniform and the physique, she indeed looked a lot like Sophie. What's the matter? Kathy asked as she noticed that Jacob had stopped talking and that he looked a bit strange. She got slightly worried that he might be sick. Oh, it's nothing. Jacob turned around to look at her. Even though he resumed his conversation with Kathy, he kept glancing back to get a look at the girl in blue to confirm it wasn't Sophie. Maybe it's someone's sister, 
she might have come to cheer for her brother or sister participating in the sports, he thought, or rather hoped. The students who were warming up went back to their classes one by one. Michael also returned to the spectator stand and sat down with the other competitors. Shortly after everyone had settled down, the dean of the college climbed up on the stage, stood at the podium, and began to give an inspiring speech. He encouraged the students to take part in sports with enthusiasm, to make the college proud, and to exercise regularly to stay healthy. The events of the college, including today's games, categorized the participation according to the subject majors instead of level of seniority. The first game was a 400-meter relay race. Participants from the management major, environmental chemical engineering major, mechatronic engineering major, and life science major all went onto the sports field. Jacob noticed that Michael, who was an international business administration major, also went up in his golden sportswear. The girls screamed as he stepped onto the track. He waved at them like a celebrity before standing at his designated spot. At that moment, Jacob took a second and glimpsed over at the entrance where the girl in the blue uniform was standing. He was relieved as she was nowhere in sight. Whoever she was, she probably found the matches boring and left. All eight participants stood in their positions on the track. The participants bolted ahead following the sound of the starting pistol. A thunder of claps echoed in the field and the athletes ran like bullets leaving a gun. They are all so fast, Kathy sighed in awe. Soon, three relays were completed and none of the majors had missed the passes. The relay batons were handed over to their last contestants. Jacob focused his attention on Michael because he subconsciously regarded this man as his competition in the 1500 meter race. The student representing the International Business Administration major was in second place when the baton was in the third runner's hand. He was almost five meters behind the student from the mechatronic engineering major. However, Michael came from behind and chased after the runner after he received the relay baton. It was almost impossible to make up for those five meters within a 100 meter distance. The noisy spectator stand suddenly went quiet as the crowd held their breaths and were completely focused on the race. Even Kathy was concentrating on the race and she stood up lightly. Five meters, four meters, three meters. Jacob opened his eyes wide in surprise. Michael was running like a rocket on the track. The girls cheering turned into screaming as Michael ran like a bolt of lightning. Sam and his group were also engrossed and were watching the relay race in astonishment. Two meters. One meter. They were in a tie. Michael! The screams of his name filled up the entire sports field. Michael ran across the finish line and was half a step faster with the relay baton in his hand. He lifted the baton up high and waved at the audience, showing a winner's stance. Michael! Michael! Everyone chanted his name rhythmically. Michael was immersed in the happiness of victory. He shook his head as sweat dripped off his black hair. There was pride and satisfaction on his face. No wonder he's the president of the rock climbing club, Kathy sighed as she looked towards the finish line. Do you like him? Jacob asked. Kathy shook her head. No, I just think he is pretty cool. His grades are good. And he looks good. He even excels in sports. No wonder he is the Prince Charming, the dreamboat for every girl in college. And he comes from a rich, influential family. That should also count, right? Jacob added. Kathy turned around to look at him and smiled a little. Are you jealous? I'm racing with him in the 1500 meter race this afternoon. Will you be cheering for me or him? Jacob asked plainly. Of course I'm going to be cheering for you, Kathy answered without thinking. Jacob simply nodded. Hey, what's on your mind? Is something bothering you? Kathy asked as she saw his displeased expression. Nothing. I thought you were one of his fans, too, Jacob said lightly. I am not a fan. I'm not even interested in him, she answered. The cheering of the crowd began to fade as the second game started. Michael took his time to return to his seat, and when he did, 
He looked in Jacob's direction and nodded at him with a smirk on his face. Is that a warning? Jacob wondered angrily. He began to calm himself down, not letting Michael influence his mood. The second event was the 110-meter hurdle race. As people got immersed in the event, Jacob tried to clear his head and began focusing on the race. Here you go. Kathy opened up a bottle of water and handed it to Jacob. You need to replenish your stamina for the race this afternoon, she said. Jacob smiled and took the water. He began talking to Kathy again and felt a lot better than before. Jacob's friends were a bit jealous, looking at the kind of attention Kathy was giving Jacob. They were kicking themselves for not taking part in the race. It could have just as easily been one of them next to Kathy instead of Jacob. Little did they know that Kathy had begun liking Jacob way before the race. As much as Jacob was enjoying Kathy's company, he had a nagging feeling in his stomach. He felt restless, and just as he was trying to understand why, a crispy and melodious voice called out to him. Hey, said the familiar voice, and Jacob stumbled and almost lost his balance as he tried to get up from his seat. He somehow found his balance and turned around to find Sophie standing in front of him with a smile on her face. Hey, hey, oh my God, Sophie, you're here. Jacob was surprised and was being extra loud owing to his nervousness. Here he was sitting with Kathy, and though he wasn't really flirting with her, there was a vibe between them. Now that Sophie was here, the nagging feeling in his stomach finally made sense. He knew, deep down, that he wasn't really supposed to be getting even remotely involved with another girl. Jacob walked towards Sophie and asked, What a surprise! How did you manage to come down? Don't you have school? I skipped school, Sophie said nonchalantly. Jacob was speechless. He opened his mouth to say something, but sealed it shut. There was an awkward silence between them, as Jacob neither said anything, nor did he ask Sophie to sit with him. She tried to break the silence and asked, So, who's your friend? Jacob looked at her and saw that she was asking about Kathy. He nervously introduced the two of them. Yes, of course, Kathy. She, she's our class president, and Kathy, this is Sophie. She's my, I mean, I, I know her from, she's an old friend. He could barely form the words. Using the word girlfriend would break Kathy's heart. Calling Sophie his fiancé would grab eyeballs, and he didn't know what else to say. Introducing Sophie as a friend seemed the safest answer. Well, old friends, huh? Hi, Sophie. It's so nice to meet you. Your friend is so cute, Jacob, said Kathy. Sophie smiled weakly at her. She took the word cute as Kathy's way of calling her a young girl. You're cute too, and you look good with Jacob, replied Sophie. Jacob gulped in nervousness. I mean, just now when you were both sitting and talking, you looked just like siblings. Ha <laughs> ha. Sophie said this in such a sincere tone that Kathy had no words. She was fuming from the inside. Sophie seemed pleased with herself. While the two girls were glaring at each other, a guy, who was sitting at the top of the spectator stand, poked Sam and pointed at Jacob. Damn, it's that girl from last time. Jacob is in big trouble. Sam frowned as he recognized Sophie as the one who waited for Jacob at the cafeteria and caused a big scene on the campus. Want to go and check it out? The guy seemed genuinely concerned. Check out what? That girl is so hard to deal with. I wouldn't be able to say anything to her, could you? Then what should we do? He stared at Sam. Sam looked at him and said, Oh, forget it. Jacob needs to learn how to deal with women sooner or later. Let him live and learn. Jacob stood nervously between Kathy and Sophie, who were looking at each other and not saying anything. Finally, Kathy was about to say something to her when Jacob said, Why are we all standing? Let's all sit. Jacob sat between them and began to stare at the field. Both women were sitting with their arms crossed in front of them. Jacob was in big, big trouble. For a fleeting moment, he wished he was sitting on a seat of thorns rather than between the two of them.
episode 35. We're engaged. As they all sat down, Sophie was still in a sour mood after Jacob introduced her as a friend. She was already annoyed at how close he and Kathy were sitting. She had skipped school and had come here to support Jacob for his race, but he didn't seem to want her there. I can leave if you want. I don't want to be a problem. She bit her lip as it hurt to say that. Jacob was a little surprised by this. In his awkwardness, he had overlooked the fact that she had come all this way for him. He understood how it must have looked when she saw him being so friendly to Kathy. He felt guilty now. No, no, you should stay, he said quickly and gave her a warm smile. Sophie smiled back and sat back comfortably. Yes, you should stay and cheer for your friend, Kathy, who had overheard Sophie, chimed in but had a sarcastic tone. She had really stressed on the word friend. It was clear that she was uncomfortable with Sophie being there. Before Sophie arrived, she and Jacob were having a good time, and she was hoping to get closer to him today. Jacob rubbed his forehead temples as his head started to hurt, and also because he couldn't express his awkwardness. He heard the displeasure in Kathy's tone, who had been extra sweet to him all day, and he was already off his game ever since Sophie dropped in unannounced. I'm thirsty. Could you go and get me something to drink? Sophie ignored Kathy's little comment and changed the topic. I'll give you money. You can go buy something that you like. Jacob did not want to leave the girls alone. He was afraid they might chew each other's heads off. Besides, if Sophie left for a few minutes, it would also give him some time to calm his nerves and maybe talk to Kathy and calm her down. I don't know your campus well. What if I get lost? Sophie asked trying to get him to go so she could find out more about Kathy. How did you find this place then? Jacob wasn't buying the whole innocent act. A large sports arena is not that hard to find, but getting to the stands where your class is sitting took me a while. I literally had to ask every other person to be able to find you. She made it sound like a tedious chore. She's right. You won't be able to find the corner store. You should buy it for her, said Kathy. As much as he wanted to argue, Sophie did come here just for him, and this was the least he could do. So Jacob agreed and left the spectator stand and walked outside the sports field to buy the drinks. As soon as Jacob disappeared around the corner, Sophie decided not to waste any time. She turned her attention to Kathy and asked her directly, Are you his girlfriend? Her expressions held barely concealed envy, and her tone was demanding. She needed to know the answer. Kathy looked at her awkwardly as she didn't expect this direct question. She fumbled around a little, not actually saying anything. She wasn't Jacob's girlfriend, but something told her that admitting it out loud would be a defeat. In that moment of silence, Kathy observed the girl closely. She was in an ordinary school uniform that somehow made her look prettier than it should have. She was younger than her by a good four to five years, but her demeanor was demanding, and she couldn't comprehend why she felt threatened by a high schooler. When Sophie saw her dumbfounded expression, she continued talking. I saw you both together. The way you guys were talking with your heads together, and you handing him that bottle of water. Sophie trailed off as she felt upset. Oh, about that. Kathy was relieved. He's just like you. He didn't bring anything to drink, so I gave him a bottle of water. That was it. So you're not his girlfriend? Sophie tilted her head and looked at Kathy, double-checking as if she was challenging her to say yes. Kathy couldn't say the word no, so she just shook her head to answer Sophie. It's good he's not your boyfriend. He's completely useless. Sophie attempted to joke once she got her answer. Kathy just smiled back at her and didn't comment. But as soon as Sophie gave her the satisfied nod, she decided that it was her turn to snoop now. So, how long have you known Jacob? I mean, you seem to be good friends, right? Kathy didn't want to be direct, but she wanted to know the deal with Sophie and Jacob. Do you want to hear the truth or the lie? Sophie decided to have some fun with her now that she was feeling better. 
truth, of course. Even when she added the words, of course, Kathy's tone sounded hesitant. She wasn't sure if she would like hearing the truth. The truth is... Sophie paused for a bit on purpose to prolong the suspense, and with it, Kathy's restlessness. After a few seconds, she said, I'm his fiance. What? Kathy's mouth opened wide, and she nearly stumbled and fell on the spectator stand. Seconds later, Jacob returned with four bottles of water. He handed a bottle of water to Sophie, kept one for himself, and gave two to Kathy. Thanks for sharing the water earlier. I thought you might like a refill, he said to Kathy and smiled at her. It made her feel a bit at ease. Some of Jacob's classmates, who were obviously snooping on the three of them, spoke up. Is this your friend, Jacob? Why don't you introduce her to us? They were teasing Jacob, and he rolled his eyes. He was about to open his mouth and tell them off, but he stopped as Sophie turned around to face them. He expected her to get irritated and tell them off herself, but instead, she gave them her brightest smile and said, Hi, I'm Sophie. It's nice to meet you all. Do you guys have any snacks on you? I'm rather hungry. The boys were stunned when the girl spoke to them directly. She was rather pretty, and they didn't expect her to give them any attention. They immediately gave her their unopened packets of chips, cookies, and beef jerky. Thank you, guys. She still had a bright smile on her face, making the guys give her all their attention. She then turned around to face the field and ate her snacks as if it was no big deal. She completely ignored Jacob, who was sitting next to her with his mouth wide open. He could have never imagined Sophie flirting with his classmates and felt a bit annoyed, but he let it go, considering the situation he was in at the moment. Kathy, on the other hand, didn't pay attention to this scene as she was still hung up on the fiancé situation that Sophie had mentioned. She didn't believe that Sophie was Jacob's fiancé. Instead, she thought that Sophie was simply lying to get under her skin. However, she did hear some rumors of Jacob's engagement when the limousine had come to pick up Jacob. It made her rethink Sophie's comments. But even if that was true, Sophie was a bit young to be someone's fiancé. Could it be that Jacob is engaged to be married to Sophie's elder sister? If that's the case, no wonder Jacob couldn't do anything about her and had to treat her nicely like a friend. Kathy analyzed the situation. Even though it troubled her to think that Jacob was committed, it was the only plausible explanation. If this high school girl is so pretty, her sister must be even prettier, she thought and bit her lip. She was jealous confused, and a bit heartbroken. Kathy watched the games, but her heart wasn't in it. She was lost in her thoughts and kept to herself for a while. Meanwhile, interesting matches of high jump, long jump, shot put, and relay races were going on. The large screen constantly declared the scores and updated the winners at the end of each game. Sophie watched for a while, but got bored and turned to Jacob. When will it be your turn? My race is in the afternoon. It's the 1500 meter race, Jacob answered proudly. Just one? Sophie's eyes were wide open. Oh, I didn't know that the criteria of being your husband was to be able to compete in a decathlon, he whispered to her sarcastically. He knew that she was just teasing him, so he rolled his eyes at her before turning his attention to the field. Well then, you better win. What's the point of coming all the way here to see you? if you don't win the race. Sophie continued to mock him, not realizing that she had just admitted out loud that she was there just for him. Jacob looked at her as a smile slowly grew on his face. Even though he already knew it, hearing her say that she had come there to see him run had made him feel happy. His confidence grew, and he began looking forward to the race. Episode 36 Am I Jealous? Jacob was feeling happy that Sophie had come all the way to watch his race. 
He didn't want the conversation to end just yet, so he asked her, How did you manage to get out of school anyway? It wasn't too difficult. My friend helped me out, Sophie replied, beaming at her successful sneak out. I faked being sick, and my friend pretended to take me to the sports teacher, who keeps all the medicines. As we were crossing the garden, I jumped over the fence and made a run for it. Jacob knew she wouldn't get into too much trouble because her teachers were aware of how influential and wealthy Sophie's family was, so they wouldn't dare to give her a hard time. You know, I bunked school once. I had to turn in an essay which I forgot about till the last minute. So I bunked school and went to watch a movie instead. Guess who I met right outside the theater? Jacob paused to see if she was taking interest in his story. Who? She was listening to him with rapt attention. The same teacher I was trying to get away from. Apparently, he was on leave that day and went to watch the same movie with his wife. I tried to avoid a scolding that one time, but ended up being scolded in front of the whole theater and then for a whole week in class. Jacob chuckled and facepalmed himself when he recalled the humiliation he faced. Sophie burst out laughing as soon as she heard the end of Jacob's story. She laughed hysterically while holding her stomach and almost fell off her chair. Jacob couldn't help but smile and look at her. She was in her element and looked so carefree. She had looked so tense and worked up in the past that watching her laugh like that put him at ease. I didn't know she gets dimples in her cheeks when she laughs. She looks so cute, Jacob thought to himself. Kathy's thoughts were interrupted by Sophie's laughter and the way Jacob was looking at her. It annoyed her to no end, and she frowned. Time for the 1,600-meter relay race, Kathy reminded Jacob in a sharp tone. Dozens of students on the bleachers started walking towards their specific spots. Jacob switched his attention to the sports field as he saw that Michael was already prepping for the race. The 1,600-meter relay race was the highlight of the athletic games at their university, as it wasn't only a test of endurance, but also a reflection of teamwork as compared to the shorter races like the 400-meter relay race. There was a lot of excitement in the air when it was announced, and the noise made by the pumped-up audience was deafening. The cheering got even louder when Michael took the field. He purposely rolled up his sleeves to show off his solid deltoid muscles. Underneath his sports shorts were a pair of thick and strong legs that sent the girls in a tizzy. He was tall and brawny and flexing his muscles at the crowd. He looked extremely powerful. The way he showed off his body caused another wave of screams from all the girls. That guy in golden sportswear looks handsome. Staring at the track, Sophie said to Jacob, What do you know about good looks? There is so much more to a man than meets the eye, Jacob objected vaguely. Sophie, however, pretended she didn't hear Jacob. She stared at the track excitedly as she was admiring Michael who was trying to act cool. Sophie fangirling his opponent made Jacob a bit jealous. He didn't know where this bitter emotion was coming from. He recalled the same feeling from last night when he was thinking about guys in Sophie's school hitting on her. He convinced himself that these feelings were coming up because Sophie was his fiancée and not because he was crushing on her. What he didn't know was that Sophie had felt the same way when she saw Kathy give the water bottle to Jacob. She just knew how to handle it better. After warming up for a few minutes, all the athletes got into position. Chants from every major supporting their representative resonated through the entire field. However, among all the cheers, the loudest and most in sync were, Come on, Michael! Damn, such an amazing event like the Athletic Games is now becoming this guy's private show. Jacob hid his annoyance, but couldn't help but vent on the inside. Thanks to the rules of the Athletic Games, each athlete could participate in no more than three games. Otherwise, who knows how much limelight Michael would get. Jacob already didn't like him, but Sophie's sudden interest in him was turning his dislike into hatred. However... He wasn't the only person to feel that way about Michael. Most of the guys were jealous of him as he always tried to act cool and got all the attention from girls. His father was the deputy mayor and he himself was the president of the reputed rock climbing club. He had the looks, 
the money, and the build to impress women, and most of the guys didn't even come close. As soon as the starting pistol fired, eight athletes launched themselves into the race with a burst of speed. The whole atmosphere heated up instantly. Sounds of loud cheering resonated in the field. Compared to the mechatronics engineering major, international business administration major didn't have a lot of male students. That was why they never did very well in sports. As the trump card of their class, Michael was placed as the fourth runner to boost their performance at the end, as he did in the 400 meter relay. After the third runner finished, the distance between international business administration and other majors was getting longer and longer. As the relay baton was handed to Michael, he was over 20 meters behind the first place runner from mechatronics engineering department and over 10 meters behind the second place runner from the computer science department. There is no chance of covering up now, thought Jacob, who was looking closely at the field. Covering up the distance was a long shot, or at least he hoped so. He suddenly had this deep desire to watch Michael lose in front of all his admirers, and especially Sophie and Kathy. However, Michael, who was on the outermost track, strived to catch up. His golden sportswear seemed to have created a golden whirlwind around him as he dashed ahead. He ran the 400-meter distance in a flat-out sprint as if he was doing a 100-meter dash. He ran as if he was on fire, and that only made the crowd go crazier. This guy could just take a breath and the girls will go gaga over that, Jacob huffed in annoyance. The thought of Michael winning this race was bothering him to no end. Two meters! One meter! He outran the second-place runner within seconds, covering 300 meters. There were only 100 meters left. Similar to what happened during the 400-meter relay race, he was about five meters behind the first-place runner. It was impossible to catch up, as he had already run at full speed for the last 300 meters, how could he still be able to sprint through the last 100 meters like it was a 100-meter dash? Jacob couldn't help but stand up and look at the track. He felt a rush in his heart. It wasn't just him. Almost all of the people on the spectator stands got up to watch the final dash. Michael surprisingly surpassed the first-place runner and reached the finish line with a one-meter gap between him and the runner. Wow! the entire audience went crazy with cheers and screams. Is this guy a real human? How could he have such amazing speed and endurance? Jacob looked at the finish line with astonishment. He runs so fast. Sophie couldn't help but praise Michael. Numerous first and second year students from the International Business Administration major stood up and cheered vigorously for their senior. Proving himself a hero once again, Michael took off his golden sports t-shirt immediately and showed off his perfect muscles. Then he held the t-shirt in his hand and waved it around. He was soaking in every bit of this moment and all the attention. Who does he think he is? A world champion? The guys in Jacob's class, who had offered Sophie snacks, said in discontent and envy. Michael! Michael! The name Michael echoed in the sports field and was enthusiastically yelled out by every girl and all the students from the International Business Administration Department. Jacob sat back down, grabbed a bottle of water, and had a sip. This guy has already led his major to two victories today. He deserves all the respect he's getting. But he's not doing this for his department. He's just doing it for his satisfaction and pride. He loves all this attention and wants everyone to cheer for him. He is so full of himself that he didn't even stop to congratulate the rest of his team and chose to hog all the credit. Jacob was brooding in silence and analyzing Michael's behavior after he got his victory. Is that who you will be competing with this afternoon? Sophie asked suddenly, and judging by the distressed look on Jacob's face, she got her answer. Episode 37. Is Jacob dating Susan? 
Sophie had a concerned look on her face when she asked Jacob if he was competing against Michael. Yeah, I'm competing with him, Jacob said slowly. Seeing the concerned look on Sophie's face, he tried to amuse her a bit and said, Do you have any advice? No, I don't have any advice. I'm not keen on sports. She bit her lip and looked at Michael on the field once again. I just hope you won't lose to him, she added. Jacob nodded slowly. And also, I'll be cheering for you. Jacob smiled sweetly at her and thought that she had actually grown to like him. Coming down here to the field to surprise him, skipping school, and now wanting to cheer for him for the race he was most likely to lose. It was more than Jacob had ever imagined a girl would do for him. Unfortunately for him, he had somehow managed to get the attention of two girls at the same time. It might be tough not to lose to Michael, but I'll be cheering for you too, Jacob, said Kathy as she overheard Sophie. She smiled weakly at Jacob and was looking at the situation doubtfully. Kathy started thinking to herself, I know that Michael was the long-distance race champion at the state level in high school. Winning the university-level race would be very easy for him. Jacob's only chance at winning this is if Michael makes a big mistake. I really hope a miracle happens today. I want to see Jacob win. Different athletic events were held one by one, and the trio sat back watching. A variety of talent was on display, and it was worth a watch. Three events after the 1,600-meter relay race, it was finally time for lunch. Jacob, let's go get lunch. You need to eat well before your race in the afternoon, Kathy said to Jacob. Jacob turned to look at Sam and his roommates and found that they weren't looking in his direction, and he had a good idea why. He sighed and nodded, saying, Let's go. He looked at Sophie and asked, Soph, let's go for lunch? Kathy was so upset as she heard Jacob call her Soph. She felt her chances with him slipping away. Sophie looked at him and promptly got up. All the university cafeterias were open today on account of the big event, but Kathy led them to the one which was the closest to the field. It also had the best food in the university. This cafeteria was famous for being the one closest to the girls' hostel, and so most girls from the hostel frequented this cafe. Consequently, it became a stop for the boys as well. Sam, for instance, always went to this cafeteria by himself, hoping that he could meet a pretty freshman and woo her into a relationship. There wasn't a big crowd at the cafeteria. Kathy led Sophie and Jacob inside, turned around to face them, and asked, So, what do you guys want to eat? Sophie looked at the menu on the wall and answered, I'll have a cheeseburger and fries. Jacob will have the same, she ordered for both of them. Jacob rushed to take out his card. I'll get it. Come on, it's on me today. Kathy grabbed Jacob's hand and pushed his card back at him. He felt the brush of her soft palm on his hand, and for a second, he wanted to hold her hand. He shook off the feeling and quickly took his hand away. We'll take three orders of cheeseburgers and fries so that we don't have to stand in the queue again for another. Kathy walked up to the ordering window briskly. Sir... Can I have three orders of cheeseburgers and fries? Oh, and throw in three milkshakes, too. Jacob had no choice but to let Kathy pay, since she didn't seem in the mood to budge. Sophie and Jacob found three empty seats. Jacob made Sophie sit down and ran back to help Kathy with the lunch order. Sophie sat down and started enjoying the scenic view of the university. The last time she was here, she hardly got to see it because she was so mad at Jacob. She giggled as she recalled the day and sighed at the greenery around her. Jacob and Kathy stood beside the pickup window as they waited for their order. Why did you pay? You have already treated me to dinner the last time, Jacob said to Kathy. That only cost a few bucks. It doesn't count. You are going to represent the entire class in a race this afternoon. This is the real treat for you. Kathy said with a smile. She smiled slightly, but it was honest and refreshing. You always say how important the race is to the class, but you are buying me food with your own money. It isn't coming out of the class committee funds, is it? said Jacob, trying to get Kathy to fess up her intentions. 
Kathy suddenly pointed out of the window and said, Look, a deer in our cafeteria garden. By the time Jacob turned around and realized there's no deer, Kathy smiled and said, It's done. Jacob smiled too, and it was good to see Kathy in a playful mood rather than the stern and serious class president for once. They carried the plates of food and walked to the table. Their stomachs were rumbling with the aroma of the beef burger and fries. Sophie was starving too, and none of them could hide the hungry look on their faces when they smelled the food. All of them immediately tucked in as soon as the food was placed on the table. Kathy smiled at Jacob as she saw Sophie eating in a hurry. Sophie completely disregarded how hot the burger was. Kathy didn't want to believe that she was Jacob's fiance, but apart from that, she found her to be a fun person. The three of them continued to have their lunch quietly till it was all gone. After finishing up at the cafeteria, Kathy looked at Jacob and said, Hey, it's still too early to go back. How about we walk around the campus? Jacob was about to agree when Sophie interrupted and said, Hey, didn't you promise me that you'd show me around? Kathy paused for a moment. She quickly thought that Sophie was misunderstanding what she said and quickly added, I meant the three of us could walk around the university. Don't bother, I'll just walk around with him, Sophie said decisively. She didn't care if she came off as hostile because she was being that way intentionally. Kathy received a light blow, but that didn't make her mad. Fine, Jacob, you can keep her company. I'll head back. She felt that Sophie was being possessive and she didn't want to intervene between the two of them. After all, she had said that she was Jacob's fiance. Even if she wasn't, this wasn't the time to refute or ask questions. I can't get rid of her hostility even after buying her lunch? Man, she really is a hothead. Thinking of this, Kathy started wondering again. I wonder why did she say that she's his fiance? I'm still pretty sure it's her sister or a cousin who's engaged to Jacob. God, I hope she's not pretty. Wait, what am I even thinking? Kathy pinched her forehead to stop herself from overthinking the situation. She decided to talk to Jacob about it later. As she was about to turn around and leave, Sophie suddenly yelled in excitement. Hey, sis! Kathy looked at the gate of the cafeteria. Jacob also turned around as soon as he heard Sophie. Susan was standing at the gate wearing a long, striped blue dress, looking as elegant as ever. She glided towards Sophie and Jacob. She walked as lightly as a breeze, and it seemed like her feet didn't even touch the ground. Her graceful attire seemed out of place in the small cafeteria packed with teenagers. Kathy was so shocked that she had to cover her mouth to prevent herself from making any sound. Her sister is Susan? The teacher who makes all the guys lose their heads when they see her? Wait, if I'm right, if Sophie's sister is Jacob's fiance and... and she just called Susan her sis, does that mean... is Jacob's girlfriend Susan? It does add up. Susan did ask Jacob to her office... He is the only student in college to ever enter her beloved office, so she called him to... Kathy pinched her forehead once again, but this time it was to hold back her tears. There was no way she could compete with Susan. I was looking for you, but I didn't expect you to be here, Susan said as she walked up to Sophie. All the students who were having lunch were genuinely surprised as they saw Susan walk into the cafeteria. They never thought that she would show up in any cafeteria at the university. Did you need me? Sophie looked at Susan in confusion. Susan glanced at Jacob and lightly held Sophie's arm. Come, I'll show you around the university. It wasn't a request, no matter how gentle it sounded. Seeing Sophie get taken away by Susan, Jacob knew he couldn't help her even if he wanted. He paused for a few seconds and then turned around to look at a distressed Kathy and said, Let's head back to the stands then? He put his arm around her shoulder. He somehow knew she was having a hard day.
episode 38. Ready, set, go! When Jacob and Kathy went back to the field, the 400-meter hurdle race had just begun. They quickly made their way to the spectator stands to watch the race. There was a two-hour break for lunch, but only a few students went to the cafeteria. Most of them had brought food and were munching on cookies and sandwiches, getting their slogans ready or chatting as they watched the race. Sam, Jacob's other roommates, and friends were surprised and excited to see Jacob and Kathy walk back together. Nobody could have ever predicted that Jacob would get so close to a girl, let alone Kathy, because he always seemed so shy and was an introvert. If everything goes smoothly, Jacob will finally have a girlfriend in college, said Sam, and the rest nodded in agreement. Hey, I remember something. As freshman, you had said that if Jacob could get a girlfriend within the four years of university, you would give us $100 each, one of the roommates reminded Sam. Not in his wildest dreams did Sam think that Jacob would find a girlfriend, but he was starting to panic now. It wasn't in his character to break promises, but $200 was a lot of money for an undergrad student. Therefore, he thought for a while and said, How about we have another bet? This time, we will bet on the rank Jacob could get in this race. The guys around them also got excited and ready to join in on the bet when they heard Sam's suggestion. This is interesting. Let's do this. Great. The bet is open. Sam shouted excitedly while picking up paper and a pen from the ground and began writing down and recording the bets. So the ratios will be like this. You'll win back the equal amount if you vote for the last place, double if you bet on the second last place, and you'll get 20 times the money if you bet that Jacob will win the first rank in this race. Sam explained the rules to everyone, posing as the bookie. Others got excited as soon as Sam started placing the bet. I bet 30 bucks on Jacob getting the last place. I bet 20 on Jacob getting the second last place. I'll bet on the second last place too. He can't be so bad. I mean, he has been practicing, right? I bet $5 on him getting the last place. $5 profit is still profit. As they made bets in full swing, Jacob and Kathy were sitting in their old spots enjoying the race. They were out of earshot and were oblivious to what the guys were doing. Jacob couldn't focus on what Kathy was saying because he was concerned about Sophie. She had skipped school for him, and he would feel very guilty if she got into trouble because of it. However, he couldn't do anything about it until he found out what happened between her and Susan, and so he tried hard to focus on the ongoing race. Following the 400-meter hurdle, the women's races began. Relay races, long-distance races, and the long jump. Loud cheering resonated once again as the players took the field. Cheerleaders waved their pom-poms and the guys held up the slogans to cheer for their class athlete, their girlfriend, or even their crushes. Suddenly, there was a lot of enthusiasm in the crowd. Seeing Jacob stare at the track with a keen interest and unaware of what was going on in his mind, Kathy asked him, There are so many pretty girls at the university and you still don't have a girlfriend? She was half teasing and half hoping for him to clear up her confusion. There is a pretty girl in my class. Is it necessary for me to find one somewhere else? Jacob said casually, without realizing what he had insinuated unknowingly. Kathy froze for a moment. Then she looked at the calm expression on Jacob's face as she tried to determine the meaning of his comment. She would have assumed that he was talking about her but she knew Jacob by now, and he could have said that as a compliment. She thought for a while, and decided to stop beating around the bush. Do you have a girlfriend? Jacob didn't hear Kathy's question, and kept staring at the racetrack. Kathy thought that he was checking out the women players, and sat back in her seat. She was disappointed. She had planned on taking the opportunity to ask Jacob more about Susan. The confusion was bothering her. She needed to know if she had a real shot with Jacob. She also didn't want to come between two people who were about to be married. She had a hard time swallowing the fact that Susan was Jacob's girlfriend, but that didn't mean that she would pry into his life. She decided not to ask him any more questions. Jacob was completely lost in watching the race when someone tapped his shoulder. 
he turned around and saw Sophie standing behind him. He didn't know when she came back. She was staring at him with a cross expression and one hand on her waist. He moved a bit to the left, leaving some space for her to sit. He asked, How did it go with Susan? Not that good, though you don't need to worry about that. What you do need to worry about is picking up your jaw and stop drooling all over the floor, Sophie said in a jealous tone and rolled her eyes at him. She too had seen him staring hard at the racetrack. Jacob immediately straightened up as he heard her remark and even checked if he was actually drooling. He realized that he was acting like a love-struck teenager, sitting between two beautiful girls and checking out others. Sophie was already annoyed at him being friends with Kathy. He didn't need her to get angrier. Thinking about Kathy, Jacob realized that he was so lost in thought about Sophie's meeting with Susan that he didn't even bother to hear anything that she had said. However, he was too embarrassed to ask her again. While other guys were genuinely checking out the female players on the track, he was actually concerned about Sophie. Obviously, Jacob wasn't going to explain this to his fiance. He felt elated to hear the jealousy in her voice, but this wasn't the time to think about that. He pretended to look serious. He tried to say something, but couldn't come up with anything. He really would have liked to know what Susan and Sophie talked about, but he couldn't ask because Kathy was there. So he stayed silent and focused on the track, more alert this time. The next event will be the 1500 meter race for men. All participants, please report to the field and get ready for the race, said the announcer. All the best, Jacob. Just give it your best. Kathy stood up with Jacob as he got ready to walk down the stands. Thank you, replied Jacob. Kathy grabbed his hand and took out a number tag from her bag. Here, I'll put it on. She stood up and was going to put it on Jacob's chest, but she seemed to have remembered something. She ended up handing the tag to Jacob. Put it on yourself, she said. Jacob nodded, pulled off the plastic, and stuck the tag with the number eight onto his chest. All participants, please enter the field. The announcement continued on and on for a few times. All of a sudden, Jacob felt a bit nervous. Kathy gave him an encouraging smile and a thumbs up. Jacob smiled back at her as he took a deep breath and walked down the spectator stand. All the best. I know you'll win, Sophie said confidently. Jacob stopped for a moment and looked right into Sophie's eyes. He could see that she actually believed that he could win. She was the only one who did. He gave her a small smile and went forward with newfound confidence. He couldn't disappoint Sophie. He took his position, which was unfortunately at the outermost track on the field. It could prove disadvantageous in a long-distance race like this. Michael, dressed in golden sportswear, was doing some stretches. He didn't even have a number tag on him. Then, he walked towards Jacob. Jacob took a look at him. He thought that Michael would make another snarky comment, but he passed by him without saying a word. His position was on the second most outer track. He was only half a meter away from Jacob. Get into position, the coach gave his command. All the participants got ready and took a running stance. Sophomore, today you'll understand the difference between us, Michael said to Jacob. Jacob looked over his shoulder slightly and saw Michael's golden running shoes and tight leg muscles. He looked ahead without a word and took a deep breath. Ready, set, go! The starting pistol was fired. Episode 39, The Sticky Candy. The eight contestants, including Jacob, shot off as soon as they heard the gunshot. Though Jacob's position appeared to be the first rank while starting, he was the farthest from the inner track. 
The runners would cut into the inner track as soon as they started in the 1500 meter races. When Jacob cut into the inner track, he was the second last in the race, while the runners who started from the tracks closer to the inner track were all running ahead of him. As for Michael, his strong legs and years of experience led him to grab the leading position in no time. The situation was such that Jacob had to overtake six of the seven runners before he could run against Michael and win the race. During the process, he had to make sure that he didn't let anyone catch up with him. On the spectator stand, Kathy frowned slightly when she saw the disadvantageous starting point Jacob had taken. Sophie was also staring at the track anxiously. Even though she didn't want to show it, she was concerned about Jacob's performance as well. The eight runners had lined up on the inner track with Jacob close to the tail. He didn't look eager to overtake any runners, and the others were also content with their current positions as they reserved their strength and tried to surpass the others at the right time. Michael was leading the race from the beginning, and the crowd went crazy watching him run. Go! Go! Michael! Go! Go! Michael! The girls' cheers got louder. Some of them even rushed down from the stands and got closer to the field to cheer for Michael. Due to their large numbers, the volunteers responsible for maintaining order couldn't keep them out and tolerated them as long as they didn't interfere with the race. The girls formed a circle around the tracks as they cheered Michael up close. After some consideration, Kathy also got down from the stand and walked onto the field to cheer for Jacob. By now, the runners had finished one lap, which was 400 meters. They were beginning to feel the fatigue, and their steps were not as swift as they had been at the beginning of the race. The competition for stamina had begun. Jacob was the first to start overtaking his competitors. From his original seventh position, he surpassed two runners in one go. Keep it up! Standing by the field, Kathy raised both of her hands to cheer for him. Jacob overtaking two runners didn't attract much attention since he was still at the rear end of the line. The crowd's attention was on the runners at the first, second, and third positions. Michael was now so far ahead of everyone that no one could possibly match his leading position. After overtaking two runners, Jacob steadied his pace and adjusted his breathing before speeding up and passing another runner. The former fourth-place runner purposely stepped to the right as he tried to block Jacob's path. However, Jacob easily dodged his blocking and successfully overtook him. Kathy was amazed at his smooth movements. Sitting on the stand, Sophie's eyes lit up as well. It was not a movement that he had learned and copied. It was natural. Is it possible that he had unintentionally reached the first level of the spirit concentration scroll and understood the makeup of the world? Sophie wondered. She wanted to go down to the field and take a closer look, but she gave up on the idea knowing that she wouldn't be able to see Jacob all that well because of her short height. Giving up, she stayed on the stand. After taking the fourth place, Jacob gradually gained speed and moved closer to the second and third place runners who had been repeatedly overtaking each other. Finally, Jacob was noticed by the crowd. On the stand, Sam and his friends had been concerned with the race since the beginning. They were more worried because of the bets they had made. Seeing Jacob overtake runners before him one by one, Sam grinned with joy since most of the guys in the class had bet on Jacob ending with either the last place, the second last place, or the sixth place. If Jacob won the fourth place, he, the bookie, would be rich. It's no use. He's running fast now, but someone might overtake him sooner or later. The guy who had bet $30 on Jacob getting the second last place said firmly. Yeah, if he doesn't save his energy, he won't be able to maintain his place on the last lap. The others agreed with him. Jacob, keep going. You could take fourth place in this highly competitive athletic games. Even if you remain fourth for a short while, it is still a great achievement, Sam thought to himself. Sam knew how amazing the runners competing on the tracks were. He was even familiar with some of them as he had played basketball with them. They were either local champions or got placed first or second in the city level races. If the gamblers on the stands had been on the track racing against them, they would have been left behind by at least more than half a lap by now. That was why Jacob's fourth position was a great feat. 
Sam caught a glimpse of Kathy, who had been rooting for Jacob while jogging along with him. Looking at Kathy's enthusiasm, Sam marveled at Jacob's luck for having the support and encouragement of such a thoughtful and caring girl. Jacob's feet stepped firmly on the tracks while his arms swung rhythmically. His steps looked heavy, but it all seemed like a fresh breeze to him. He looked confident and sure-footed on the field. After Jacob took the fourth position, the students, both on the stands and around the field, began to notice the runner number eight. He had been advancing steadily without much ease and with no sign of fatigue. Who is this guy? Is he from the mechatronic engineering major? He was in the last position at the beginning of the race. People began to talk about Jacob because they found that the runner with the tag number eight was running steadily and even speeding up slowly while others had begun to slow down. Kathy watched Jacob as he passed the curve in front of her and saw the drops of sweat on Jacob's face clearly. She couldn't help but feel a rush of butterflies in her stomach. Jacob looked at the ground ahead of him and was oblivious to the fact that the crowd was still cheering for Michael. Kathy felt an extraordinary rush of attraction towards Jacob as she looked at his earnest and persistent effort. Just a moment ago, when the girls were competing, Jacob looked like every other guy as he keenly watched the performance of the athletic girls on the tracks. He was checking them out for sure. However, when the real responsibility of competing in the race fell on his shoulders, he came through. Sweat dripped down from Jacob's chin. Some of it soaked his shirt while the rest dropped onto the track and shattered in pieces before sinking into the ground. While all the other girls were still cheering for Michael, owing to his handsome face and brawny physique, Kathy was too busy getting more and more attracted to Jacob. On the spectator stand, Sophie had her eyes locked on Jacob and gradually understood his movement. Each of Jacob's steps seemed to contain dragon principles and were extraordinarily steady and firm. A unique aura seemed to have surrounded him while nature's essence flowed through him. His aura was gradually transforming. Sophie couldn't get to the bottom of it. She wished Susan had been here since she would have been able to tell her what level Jacob was on. She didn't realize that the most important thing for cultivation was the one-mindedness between one's mind and one's spirit. Jacob did much better than her in this regard. On the rooftop of the stadium nearby, Susan stood in her blue dress with the blue sky as her background and watched the race intently. She nodded with appreciation and soon disappeared in a flash. While the second place and third place runners were still trying to overtake each other, like a floating ghost, Jacob passed both of them with ease. In their haste to overtake one another, the athletes didn't pay attention to Jacob who was steadily catching up to them. They were astonished and tried to overtake him, but Jacob just left them in the dust. Jacob's steps were light and his breathing was steady. It felt like he was taking a walk. It was impossible for the other runners to catch up with him. It seemed like he was flying. No way! In the spectator stand designated to Jacob's class, all the guys stood up in awe as they were stunned at what they saw. In the blink of an eye, Jacob's ranking had turned from 7th to 2nd. No one knew how it happened, even though Jacob had managed to overtake his rivals one after another right in front of their eyes. Hearing the crowd's gasps of astonishment, Michael, who had been leading with ease, turned his head to see what the commotion was about. He was in shock to see that the athlete on the second rank was gaining on him. The fact that the athlete was none other than the sophomore whom he regarded with disdain was way more shocking for the college stud. Distracted, he stumbled and almost fell. This precarious movement caused a wave of alarming shrieks among the girls. Michael didn't regard the girls' shrieks as concern for him. Instead, he was humiliated by it. He gritted his teeth and was determined to not allow Jacob to get anywhere near him in the race. He sped up abruptly, and the girls' cheering got louder with his acceleration. Go, go, Michael! A crisp voice appeared among the others. Jacob turned his head slightly and saw the most popular girl of the university, Lisa, cheering for Michael beside the track. 
On the track, Michael thought he had pulled away from Jacob and relaxed a bit. However, when he looked back, he found that Jacob was steadily catching up with him. He sped up again. Whenever he looked back, he always found Jacob gaining on him. This guy is like sticky candy. The last time I saw him practice, he didn't look like he could be my rival. Michael felt threatened for the first time. He turned his head around to glance at Jacob and he found his rival looking calm and breathing evenly. He looked in perfect form. Seeing Jacob making gains on him, Michael, who had his eye on the first place, immediately regulated his breathing and sped up. Seeing the distance between Michael and Jacob gradually getting shorter, Lisa cheered loudly for Michael again. Kathy happened to be standing near her and she got annoyed as she watched Lisa cheer for Michael. She bumped Lisa in the waist with her elbow intentionally. Ouch! Lisa frowned as she put her hand on her waist and turned angrily to the person beside her. When she saw it was Kathy, her anger shot up. She glared at Kathy unpleasantly. Sorry, Kathy said sarcastically, before bringing her palms around her mouth to form the shape of a trumpet. Go, go, Jacob, she shouted. Lisa gritted her teeth while she glared at Kathy. However, she didn't dare to release her anger. She knew about Kathy's reputation at the university. Kathy was on good terms with the teachers. Jacob and Michael were in the lead. The third-place runner was well behind them while the fourth-place runner could overtake the third-place runner at any minute. On the spectator stand, Sophie looked at Jacob gaining up to Michael. She smiled wide and said, Go get him, dragon! Episode 40 And the winner is... The final lap and a half was remaining for the race to end, and the competition was cutthroat. The other six participants remained forgotten as all eyes were on Jacob and Michael. The race could end up in anyone's favor now, and it was only a matter of a few moments. The long races were generally not a big attraction for the students, as they got bored, but ever since Michael started participating in them, it became a much-anticipated event especially for girls who were vying for his attention. Today, for the first time, there was another guy who could actually beat Michael, and this caught every guy's attention. They focused on the race with rapt attention. It was quite refreshing to see that Jacob could take away Michael's long-standing status of a champion. Michael would be disgraced if he lost this race, let alone losing to a first-time participant like Jacob the crowd was pretty excited to see the outcome. Michael's breathing became short and his steps got heavier. As a veteran athlete, he hadn't even considered the possibility of losing this 1,500-meter race. And now, a college nobody had come out of nowhere and was trying to steal his victory. This threw him off his game. On the other hand, Jacob had a determined look on his face and his steps remained steady. Anyone could tell that he was determined to take the trophy home today. When he passed the starting line, he glanced at the sign on the side of the tracks. There was only one lap left. On the spectator stands, all the guys standing beside Sam were stunned. They had not expected that Jacob could reach second place and maintain his place for so long. As long as Jacob didn't make any mistakes, he would surely get third place even if his stamina ran out on him during the final lap. They still didn't believe the possibility of him actually winning today. None of them had betted that Jacob would enter the top three. Standing among them, Sam had a huge grin on his face. Since no one was winning the bet, it meant that the bookie was the real winner and would get all the money. Jacob, drink some water. Kathy dashed along with Jacob by the side of the track as she handed him a bottle of water with its cap removed. Glancing at her gratefully, Jacob took some gulps as he continued running and handed the bottle back to Kathy. 
A girl followed suit and proceeded to hand a bottle of water to Michael, who was a few meters in front of Jacob. Usually, Michael would have loved this gesture from one of his fans, but surprisingly, he pushed the girl's arm away and the water spilled all over the track as the bottle fell to the ground. Go, Jacob! shouted Sophie, who was standing ever since the race began. Jacob glanced at her and waved. He brought his attention back to the track in front of him. His body tilted forward as his heels continued to step firmly onto the ground. With a snap, he shot forward like a bullet. He was sprinting. Everyone was screaming by now. He began to sprint with one whole lap left. It was 400 meters away from the finish line. It was too soon to start sprinting. Seeing the astonished faces around him, Michael, in the leading position, involuntarily turned around. When he saw Jacob sprinting toward him like a rocket, he hurriedly moved to the right as he tried to block him. But it didn't slow him down. Jacob leaped into the air and passed Michael from the other side, looking like a trained athlete. Michael's heart sank. Jacob had overtaken him. It was the first time in his whole life that he was overtaken by someone with such ease. In his heart, he felt as if Jacob had already defeated him, though he didn't let it show on his face. He still kept running at a steady pace. He will regret sprinting so early, Michael thought to himself with resentment. He was glaring at Jacob, who was moving further and further away from him. He was holding on to the hope of winning at the last minute as he had done all day today. Go, Jacob! On the spectator stand, Sam abruptly stood up and shouted. He felt immensely proud of his friend at that moment and didn't even care about the money for once. Go, Jacob! The guys joined him. One after another, all the guys from their class started cheering for Jacob. The girls joined in soon after. Their loud cheering caught attention and their high energy spread through the other classes of their department. Soon, all the students from the mechatronics engineering major began to cheer for Jacob. From their major to others, the entire engineering faculty began to cheer for Jacob. Their voices were loud and unanimous. Jacob! 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 The cheering resonated across the whole field, and the voices got louder and more distinct. Their faculty had the highest number of students, and their collective cheering was a magnificent sight. Meanwhile, the cheering for Michael from the girls was being overpowered, as if small waves were being overpowered by a tsunami. Hearing the deafening cheers, Michael panicked for the first time. He even found that the guys from the other faculties were cheering for the sophomore. You all want me to lose? A wave of fury surged in Michael's mind, and the fury was a source of newfound energy as it allowed him to sprint forward. On the tracks, the two runners continued to sprint as if they were in a 100-meter dash. They sprinted forward with all their strength, even though the finish line was still 300 meters away. Hearing the deafening cheers, Jacob felt a strength surging in his body. Stepping hard on the ground, he began to speed up. Michael, who was also sprinting, got left in the dust as he saw Jacob run away at an insane speed. He knew he would never catch up. Despair engulfed him. He had been overconfident and didn't think for a second that his opponent could overtake him like that. They now had a distance of about 20 meters between them, and he knew that he had lost. When Jacob was almost at the finish line, he turned around to see if Michael was right behind him. His move was noted by most of the audience. They all thought that it was Jacob's way of taunting Michael as he crossed the finish line to show him that he had lost. When Jacob saw Michael was still far behind him, he relaxed before sprinting across the finish line. There was a loud cheer from all the people rooting for him. The energy on the field was at an all-time high. This was the most unexpected outcome of the race there could have been. No one had expected Jacob to even come in the top three, let alone win the race. His strength had really surprised and impressed his friends. Michael also reached the finish line a few seconds later. Most of the people did not even notice him, as they were too busy celebrating Jacob's victory. The only people who were quiet on the field were the girls who were Michael's fans and the students from his major. 
One of his friends tried to drape a towel over his shoulders, but was pushed away by him forcefully. With a pair of red eyes, Michael dragged his exhausted body to the locker room without looking back. He wasn't even planning to attend the award ceremony. On the stands, the vice president of the university slouched on his chair with a cup of tea in his hand. He grinned as his gaze followed Jacob, who was walking towards Kathy as soon as he won the race.